Eliminating water poverty goes beyond just quenching someone's thirst. It also eliminates many inequalities that millions of Indians face today. It eliminates gender inequality. With clean water, we empower women to rise above becoming water wives. It eliminates corruption and economic predators. With access to wells and communities, water mafias are put out of business. It eliminates economic hardship in rural communities. With access to irrigation water, farmers can support themselves and their families. It eliminates political unrest. With access to the most basic human need, we create a more harmonious society. What starts with a drop of water ripples outward, promoting solutions for gender inequality, economic mobility, civic pride, and climate change. When you eliminate water poverty, you create a better India. Hi, everyone. I am Dolly Parikh from Overseas Volunteers for a Better India. On behalf of the OVBI Water Team and the partners, I want to welcome you to the OVBI Water Life Series. With an intention of eliminating water poverty, key leaders working to solve India's biggest environmental, economic, and social challenge come together to share their vision of transforming India. We have a great panel over here today. I would like to introduce you to Palav Sudarshan, a business operations leader at Adobe, a director of strategic partnerships at OVBI Water Team, and a founding member of IITNs for influencing India's transformation. He is extremely passionate about individual and societal transformation and meditation and social services. Palav Sudarshan will be moderating the panel today. Welcome, Palav. Thank you, Dolly, and good morning to everyone from California. Uh, let me begin with a brief introduction about OVBI. Uh, so the OVBI water team started a project in Halgara, Maharashtra about four years ago. The intention of addressing the side in India. Over the years, we learned it became very apparent to us that the core of several issues in rural India actually stem from water poverty. So we refined our vision to eliminate water poverty in rural India. Uh, with the help of our volunteers, partners and those. We have built the infrastructure to raise the water tables, replenish aquifers, and revive rivers in four states, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and Rajasthan. So now our goal at OEBI is to build on this success with partners such as Rotary, Asian Friends, and Argium to take it to the next level. Uh, we recently signed a MOU with the government of Karnataka to launch the Grand Karnataka Project uh, we're working with the government of Karnataka, OVBI and its partners will be driving watershed management across 27,000 villages in Karnataka. It's an ambitious goal. And that is why we are excited to talk to our key partners here. A bit of a background on, on today's structure for the today's series. Uh, we will start with a presentation from IIT IIT, followed by a panel discussion, uh, where I will start with a few questions to the panelists. Uh, I would also like to remind the audience that you also have an opportunity to ask questions on whatever your favorite media, social media uh, forum is, you know, on YouTube or Facebook. Uh, just write your question in the comment area, and then we'll take those up uh, uh, in the Q and A section. So now I would like to introduce Joe and Karthik, the founders of IIT IIT. Uh, OVBI has formed a strategic partnership with IIT last year, and we are looking to expand the projects this year. Uh, I'll start with Joe. Joe, after a successful career as a strategic consultant and a startup mentor and investor, in, Joe in 2018 founded IITNs for influencing I, uh, India's transformation, IIT, IIT uh, to scale social impact. Shaped early in his career by his experience at McKinsey and Company, Joe developed an understanding of how businesses can take advantage of collaboration and technology to scale successfully. He brings this critical thinking to the mission of IIT. Joe completed his MBA from IIM Calcutta and his bachelor's from IIM. Thank you, Palav.
so uh, my co-founder here with me is Karthik. Uh, Karthik and myself started this. Karthik himself hit the pause button uh, several years back, came to India. He's now moved back from New York to India. And we met two years ago. Uh, he himself is a self-made entrepreneur, uh, ran successfully and exited two businesses and has now decided to kind of really commit himself. Uh, the two of us have decided to commit ourselves, I should say, to scaling the social sector. So there's Karthik and myself. Welcome, Karthik. Dolly, Thank we could you. start with the presentation. So uh, this is just to give you a quick sense. This is IIT for IIT. This is the, the list of our 133 founding members. And Karthik and myself are highlighted here on the top left uh, with the white background. Our mission is to harness the collective voice of IITians globally to enable national scaling of social impact programs. Our IITians are founding members from around the world. Uh, large majorities are in, in the US uh, and uh, and of course, the second largest is in India, and we have a, a, a good contingent in Singapore as well. What we're going to talk to you about today is the program Rejuvenation of Water Bodies. And uh, our process started with this program in 2019, where we first, and for most of our partner programs, first certify it as a design for national scale program. And then along with the program leadership, develop a 10 year plan to take it national. And I'm going to ask Karthik to walk us through this initial journey with this program, Rejuvenation of Water Bodies. Over to you, Karthik. Uh, thanks, Joe. As many of you are well aware, uh, more than 40% of India is drought impacted year after year. A recent study by the International Water Management Institute shows India as one of the 17 worst affected countries rapidly running out of water. But the good news is that the problem is mostly man-made. Hence, the solution is simple. A significant number of our country's three lakh water bodies are silted up, making them ineffective. The solution, as I said earlier, is relatively simple. Desilting of these water bodies. Two foundations, the ATE Chandra Foundation and Caring Friends, both Mumbai based, have partnered to have successfully desilted 7,500 water bodies across Maharashtra, resulting in adding 650 million liters per day of water availability post the monsoons. And more importantly, they have accomplished this across 26 districts of the state, thereby proving its replicability. And here are the measurable outcomes. 200 million people in rural India across 16,000 villages, not to mention the 68,000 farmers who benefited from the silt have benefited by getting the equivalent of 65,000 liters per day of additional water. Here is a picture of a water body. Karthik, just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to, to interrupt. Okay, Joe. Ah, Joe's coming back. Ah, Joe, we lost you. You have just finished. Can you bring the picture of the silted water body? You want to just... Uh... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I, I've gone through two slides, actually. Yeah, go ahead. One more. One more. Yeah. So here is a picture of a water body, which is completely silted up. It's actually difficult to imagine that this was supposed to be a lake. 
This now shows the silt which has been removed to be spread over farmland as nutrient rich fertilizer. And this is what an ideal water body should look like post the monsoons. The other big advantage of the desilting model, besides its simplicity, is that the donor, state government, and local community funding is only 25% of site cost. Whereas 75% of project cost which is incurred in transportation of the silt is borne by the farmer. Since this nutrient silt, when used as a fertilizer, improves his yield by up to 50% and also lowers his fertilizer cost by 30 to 40%. We have identified 124 drought districts across 11 states which have water bodies and which need desilting. The effective national impact is providing water to 250 million people in rural India at an upfront cost of only US dollars 100 million over a 10 year time horizon. Once desilted and regularly maintained, these rejuvenated water bodies will provide water on a regular basis year after year. To put it in simple terms, based on current cost of Rs. 1500 per tanker, the resulting impact is in saving $2 billion, and this is B for boy, at an upfront cost of only $100 million over 10 years. Back to you, Joe. Thank you, Karthik. So that's where we designed this, uh, identified this program as a 10, and that's the 10 year plan. Where we are today is now thinking about how do you take this national? And we've worked on the design of a three year national capability scaling project. You can see that's the end of the blue line. And then following this right now, what we're working on with our partners is planning and resourcing for this project. So I'll just give you a quick snapshot of what this project in Visage is doing. So broadly, there are six key areas we want to focus on. One is scaling the program in two more states to make it a three state model, then aligning other water partners and other water initiatives around it, enabling technology at scale, government, community, which is a key enabler and donors. And I'll just walk you through what this means. So in Karnataka and Rajasthan, we've identified the two states we want to scale it in. And we've come up with this concept called the cluster model, where focusing on some key districts in these states, we will identify clusters that can align our partners and just doing about 2% of the total water bodies, we can prove in an aligned model with our partners as well. In terms of partners, the focus is at three levels. One is what is called the commons, which is your river, your commons, your tanks, your eco cover, the forest and the grasslands and bringing that together and creating solutions in the commons. Then of course you have the farmer with the farm ponds and the drip irrigation. And then at the village level with the villager, there is water harvesting as well. And you see some of the partners, Art of Living, OVBI, FES, and Rotary that are working with us on this alignment. For tech at scale, the key is to design the model for the cluster at scale and understanding the hydrology of the cluster as well, managing it at scale through a societal platform. And then again, measuring the impact at the cluster level using satellite imagery and hydrology. And here are some of the partners, FES, Argium, OVBI, Green Good Labs, Sundaram Climate Institute that we're working with to figure out the technology at scale. Community, the villages themselves, it's very critical. And you have three stakeholders there, the Gram Panchayat itself, that have schemes that they work on and programs. The farmer that Karthik just talked about where the fertilizer economics allows them to be a co-investor. And for the villager as well, where the water economics plays a role in Rajasthan, where we did some work, we found the villagers themselves paying 800 to 1200 rupees a month for their portable water. And here are some of the areas in Rajasthan where we've got some work already started as a, during COVID, three gram panchayats, 11 villages and 250 farmers. The second key area at the community level are the grassroots NGOs. And this is very critical because water 
being a resource that ebbs and flows year on year, you need someone committed to that district or that area from a long term basis that's working with the community and making sure that the sustainability remains. And there are several grassroots NGOs and we've started to work with them, three in Rajasthan, Grama Vikas, Gravis and Gram Chetna, and then several of them, The Art of Living, FES, Gram Vikas and several others. And this is a core to holding the model together and ensuring that it remains entrenched in the community. And then finally, at the state level, uh, across the different NGOs, the donors, the government, you need a state organization that can help you enable that state. And Rotary has emerged as a very strong partner working with us here in Karnataka to enable that state model to develop. At the, go at the government level, the government has many, many schemes. And this, those schemes look at water from several perspectives. And we've started to work out and identify those schemes. And many of our partners are already working with the government on some of those schemes. And we need to ensure that these programs and these clusters work with the government in partnership to avail of the benefits of those schemes. And then finally, the donors. And we look at donors being the catalyst to the model. As Karthik showed you, the co-funding, even for the site costs, include donors, include the farmers, include government schemes. But donors become the catalyst that enable the project to kind of take momentum and grow. And there are several donors that uh, we've started to work with here in Karnataka, OVBI has already funded some work here. Fuel a Dream works with high school children who've already raised 20 lakhs. Rotary through their Rotary clubs have strong water commitments. And then from the IIT standpoint as well, IIT, IIT has identified about 300 HNI IITians around the world who we believe we can speak to and get them engaged in the process. And so this is the three year project that we'd like to pull out that will prove the model that will enable the scaling to happen and accelerate the scaling by bringing it in these clusters in Karnataka and Rajasthan. So to just give you a quick sense of how we're picking these clusters, here is a snapshot of what we've done in Karnataka. We've looked at all the different districts and we've identified and prioritized the districts based on the availability of these water bodies. And so the top three, Tumkur, Kolar and Chikbalarpur, have a very, very large number. Tumkur is close to about a thousand of these water bodies that are what we're calling between the 25 to 100 acre where you really get your bang for the buck. And we've also looked at both HDI and drought because you want to make sure that you're having an impact in districts where you want to improve both HDI and where districts have drought issues. And, and these three districts all fall in either quartile three or quartile four of HDI and drought. The next thing that we've done done, and this is an example again in Kolar, so one of the three that I just showed you, in Kolar, here is where we're aligning with partners. So that's the Palar riverbed, which is currently dry and needs to be rejuvenated and the art of living is doing work here in eight mini watershed areas and those are the quadrants that you can see around there we've now started to work with them to identify the water bodies that can be aligned along their work and and augment the work that they are doing down that palar riverbed in these mini watersheds and that's where the rejuvenation of water bodies will prioritize some of the water bodies to work on and then with rotary they have a very strong program called Rotary Kotinati, which does eco restoration. And, and they too will align their work around these water bodies and denuded areas on the hills where planting trees and agroforestry is going to make a big difference to the water retention ability. And all these three then become what I call the commons. I showed you the commons. So this becomes the solution for the commons. And then at the next level, you also have farm ponds, drip irrigation, water harvesting at the farmer villager level. And, and we look to also extend the program to align those programs as well so that your holistic uh, solution emerges. And this is what a snapshot of a cluster would look like. And, and overall, this cluster is about 100 water bodies in total. So how would we resource this? This is just a snapshot of how the resources across the partnerships are coming together. And so from AT Chandra Foundation and Caring Friends, we have Deepti who runs Sustainable Rural Development and Pushkar, who's a program manager. And so we're working and they're really running and thinking through how this needs to scale across these different states. From IIT, IIT, I'm the team lead. And Karthik and two of our founding members, Nandan and Prasad, have committed eight hours a week to this program. And we have Vijit, who's a full-time program manager. And then we also have from our partner organizations, partners working specifically on these clusters. So in Karnataka, in Kolar, Chikpalarpur, and in Tumkur, we have partners from Art of Living, FES, Gram Vikas, Rotary, and others working on designing this cluster model 
And similarly, we have partners, Gravis, Gram, Chetna, and Seva Mandir, understanding what we can do in Rajasthan. And then on technology, we have the three areas. Uh, one is for the design side, hydrology. We have FES and we have Sundaram Climate Research Institute. We have Argument Socion for the societal platform itself that will help us manage the entire intervention. And then on the satellite side, we are talking to Green Good Labs and OVBI, Megavi, to understand how satellite technology can be applied to apply technology at scale. And so this is how functional resources will come together to actually enable this pro program to execute in these clusters. And besides the functional organizations, we're also looking at bringing out voice to the movement. And so these are the IIT IT resources. This is close to two dozen resources in the US, India, and other places who will lend their voice and engage their networks to bring that weight to these programs. And we also have the same from our partner organizations as well, ATCF, Caring Friends, Rotary, OBBI, and other organizations like Fuelitry. So broadly, coming back, here's where we are. That's where we are today. We're right now at the end of the design phase, and this planning and resourcing is taking off. By April next year is when we look to kick off this three-year project and run it as a three-year project, during which time across Karnataka and Rajasthan, we would prove the three-state model, adding to Maharashtra, and then post that, nationally scale this over a seven-year period, and really what uh, Karthik showed us, the 124 districts, the goal is to get as far as possible and really make a national difference. So that's really the cluster model, and uh, just to set the context, and what I'd like now to hand over back to Pallav to really talk to our panelists who represent four key aspects of this, the community, government, scale, and eco-forestation. Back to you, Pallav. Thank you, Joe Thank you. and Karthi, uh, for sharing the cluster model and IIT IIT's roadmap for water transformation. Uh, next, I'm happy to host a very distinguished panel representing the four aspects of scaling, uh, working with community, working with government, technology at scale, and collaboration across programs. Uh, as Karthik and Joe have shared, Rejuvenation of Water Bodies program in Maharashtra is run as a collaboration between Caring Friends and AT Chandra Foundation. I would first like to introduce Nimish Sumati, who co-founded Caring Friends with uh, Ramesh Kacholia in 2005. Caring Friends is an informal network of committed philanthropists with no bank accounts, no president, secretary, or chairman, and all contributions going directly to the programs it supports. Nimish Bhai, as he's affectionately called, is a dedicated philanthropist who, through his passion, powers this network to support several successful grassroots programs across India with rejuvenation of water bodies. <coughs> Welcome, Nimesh Pai. Hi, Palo. Thank you so much. Uh, namaste, everybody. I thank IIT, IIT, and OBI for hosting us today. Uh, the video that Joe has made, and I think you should show it, puts in a lot of passion, It'll reflect his passion to the whole program. And I am happy to be part of the six initiatives that IIT has taken. Let me first begin with the mindset of villagers because the design is from that in mind. See, the poor have very little things as capital. Two things are deeply ingrained. One is self-respect and the second is dignity. With charity, we should try to strengthen it and not dilute it. We should help them fulfill their responsibilities and not take over their responsibilities. Our aim should be to make them free of government schemes and not to make them part of government scheme alone. So I say this, that charity karo bar bar, development karo ek bar. <laughs> the video or the success story of Lakshman Savade, which will be shown to you, I think, is within six years, that person who was looking for a job under Narega in 2013 is today the owner of additional 2.5 hectares which is bought. He's bought a tractor and he's sending his school children to private schools. So the transformation is tremendous and this is why we have designed the regeneration of water bodies with the community participation at peak at 75%. And these are the same farmers whose loans have been waived off, whose interests have been waived off and they have gotten a lot of compensation from the government. And these same farmers are paying us, or rather spending 75% of the project cost. 
this itself is a proof of the concept but among watershed initiatives we don't consider desilting as an alternative or a substitute no it is supplementary it is not a substitute while we have done and still doing deep cct cct ridge to valley deepening widening vat all such initiatives what we found is in 10 years time we have not even reached 100 villages so it is very difficult to scale whereas with desilting in less than 3 years we reach 7500 dams it's like a very high high speed intervention and it's like working in the casualty ward in a hospital where there's no time drought region is like drought region you don't have time so this is something which is been very good very high in impact and the return to the farmers who have invested 75% is within 6 months the philanthropists get their satisfaction and the government can see results so it's a win win situation and that is the reason we scaled it now think, the uh, reason for scaling yeah and imesh bhai uh, before you continue we, we let, uh, let's just play the video we didn't play the video uh, earlier Sorry. let's just play the video so that yeah. people have the context for this uh, for the uh, work that you are referring to thanks palo इसके बाद 2012 में अकाल पड़ा ये डैम इतना सूख गया कि किसी पंछी को यहाँ पीने के लिए पानी भी नहीं मिलता नाराजी रहा करते अब हमें क्या करना है क्या नहीं करना इसका बहुत टेंशन होता था एक कार्यक्रम के दौरान केयरिंग फ्रेंड्स नामक एक संस्था से संपर्क हुआ फिर उसके बाद इन केयरिंग फ्रेंड्स के लोगों ने डैम देखा उसके बाद उन्होंने बताया कि हम गाद निकाल कर देते हैं आप लेके जाइए गाद की तो मुझे जरूरत थी पर उसमें कई सारी मुश्किलें आ रही थी इस समस्या का हल निकालने के लिए मैं बैंक के पास गया लोन लिया और गाद को अपने खेतों में डाल दिया गाद को डालते समय गाँव वालों ने बहुत विरोध किया क्यूँकी उन्हें इसका महत्व तो पता ही नहीं था जब मैंने गाद डाली और उन लोगों को ला इसे मैंने दिखाया तो उन्हें बात समझ में आ गई और इसके बाद बहुत से लोग आगे आए गाद की मिट्टी इतनी उपजाऊ और नरम होती है कि अगर इसमें हाथ डालें और वो सूखी हो तो मिट्टी हाथ से फिसल जाती है जमीन के अंदर जिन तत्वों की कमी है वो इस गाद के माध्यम से पूरी हो सकती है और अगर पथरीली जमीन पर इसे बिछा दिया जाए तो वो जमीन भी इतनी बढ़िया हो जाती है की अगले पंद्रह बीस सालों तक कोई परेशानी नहीं होती जमीन उपजाऊ बन जाती है गाद निकालते समय डैम का स्तर गहरा होने लगा और उस गहराई की वजह से 2013-14 में जो बरसात हुई उससे ये डैम भर गया गाद निकालने की वजह से पानी भरेगा पानी की वजह से गाद भरी जमीन में उत्पादन बढ़ेगा और पानी सिंचाई के काम आएगा ये कुदरत ने हमें सिखाया है आज इसी गाद की वजह से हम ये फसल लगा पाए अंगूर लगाए कपास लगाए जिस कपास का उत्पादन पाँच क्विंटल तक था वो आज पंद्रह ऐसी बीस क्विंटल हो चुका है भारी मात्रा में रासायनिक खाद न देते हुए खाद की मात्रा कम देने लगे बचत होने लगी हमारे जो बच्चे गांव में पढ़ते थे अब बाहर जाकर पढ़ाई करते हैं मेरा सपना यही है कि मेरी बच्ची को खूब पढ़ाऊ उसे बहुत ही बड़ी बनते देखूं। मुझे आईपीएस बनने की इच्छा है मैं आईपीएस बनने से पापा का सपना पूरा कर पाऊंगी यही मुझे लगता है खेती में गाद डालने ऐसी मेरी काफी तरक्की हुई है शेडनेट हाउस बनाया ढाई से तीन एकड़ जमीन मैंने और खरीद ली ट्रैक्टर लिया गाड़ी ली और अभी मुझ पर जो बैंक का लोन चल रहा है उसे भी मैं धीरे धीरे अदा कर रहा हूँ और इस तरह से मेरे हालात बदल रहे हैं। इट्स रियली वेरी अपलिफ्टिंग स्टोरी नमेश भाई थैंक यू पलो uh next our next panelist is amit chandra chairman of bain capital india who partnered to scale the rejuvenation of water bodies program through his family foundation at chandra foundation uh the at chandra foundation runs amongst the country's largest programs in rural transformation and capacity building amit was named young global leader by world economic forum in 2007 and along with his wife archana received the asia heroes of philanthropy award in 2016 welcome amit ji namaste pleasure to be here thank you so much for inviting me it's a pleasure to be here once friends yeah i look forward to a very interesting discussion with you amit ji a uh, critical aspect of the cluster scaling model is to engage technology at scale 
Our third panelist is Mala Subramaniam. Mala is the CEO of Argium, where she leads the societal platform approach to tech, enables scaling for sustainable and participatory water security, working with the government, NGOs, and ecosystem actors, and leveraging public digital infrastructure. Mala has over two decades of experience in strategy and execution in banking, education, agrotech, ITES, and not for profit. She holds an MBA from IIM Calcutta, which is also Joe's alma mater. Welcome, Mala. Hello. Happy to be here. Uh, the second crit uh, critical element of cluster model is aligning across water and environmental problems. Ravi Shankar Dakoju, our fourth panelist, is founding Trusty Rotary Environment Foundation and co-founder of Ara Housing. Among other leadership roles at Rotary, Ravi champions Rotary Kotinati, a Rotarian mission to plant one crore saplings for revenue district and restore India's tree and forest. In 2018, Ravi became the first Indian national to announce a 100 crore donation, a rupees 100 crore donation to the Rotary Foundation, the second largest contribution to the foundation after Bill and Melinda Gates Fund. Welcome, Ravi Ji. Greetings from India and Rotary. It's, 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 the, it's my pleasure to host this elite panel. Um, Dolly, if we can also add Nemesh Bhai back, please. Yeah, welcome back, Nemesh. Um, so, Nemesh Bhai, you started uh, talking a bit about um, uh, your engagement and how you chose the duration of water bodies. Um, uh, you know, and how that emerged as a top priority. Can you talk a bit more about the community engagement uh, that uh, you know the, that made this so successful? Yeah, see, the community engagement is very important in all the projects that is being done. Otherwise, subsidies and government schemes are being rolling out since many years. So here is one of the rare cases where 75% is borne by the community. Otherwise, usually it is 20%. But the community participation is also because of the high ROI that the farmers get within mm -hmm. six months and the water availability which relieves them from such hardships. You know, water is the backbone of all poverty and all social evils. Once you take care of water, there are a lot of problems which can be solved with that. So the scalability, uh, Palau, can I speak about the scalability now? Absolutely, please. Yes, that, that's the very key aspect of all this. Yeah, the high number that you see, 7,000 dams in three years, was all Amit's idea. He took it to the state level with his network and he appointed the PMU. His colleague Dipti and me and all of us have put in a lot of work and a lot of trips to the region to mobilize the villagers and the NGOs. Here, what we found interestingly is that this technique has been done many, many years ago. It is not that we have invented, we have just discovered it. But today, very few NGOs are doing it. But when we went and we when we did this, we did not have to spend a single rupee on marketing or advocacy or awareness. The day the JCB and the Pokeland, the excavators, start working, there was a queue with tractors and tippers to cart the silt. So the farmers very well know this, that the silt is highly fertile. It reduces their inputs. Across, across the states, we did this in Karnataka, uh, sorry, Andhra, Gujarat, Bundelkhand, and this year with IIT, IIT in Rajasthan. Across all these four places, including Maharashtra 5, we have not spent a single rupee on awareness. So this is the proof of concept. And thanks to the senior government officers, like Mr. Chahel, who is the current commissioner or Mumbai uh, municipal commissioner, and Mr. Eknaji Dhavle, and of course, Dipti, a friend Anand Bang of Search, Gachi Roli, and not to forget our NGOs, all of them working in 40 degrees temperature to supervise the carting and the desilting program. So without them, this would not have been possible. So it's thanks to all of these that we have been able to reach this. And I'll end here with a statement that make others life better and yours will be great. <laughs> Wishing you all a very happy Diwali in advance. Stay safe 
take care thank you yeah, thank you namesh bhai it's just incredible to hear uh, you know your success story and how farmers are lining to collect uh, the silt you know what we refer to as the black gold uh, which is truly a key component in making the model scalable uh my next question would be for amit ji but before i go there i just want to remind the audience that you know you also have an opportunity to ask questions please submit your questions in the comment section in whatever social media forum you are on and then we'll take those questions up uh, after a few panel questions that i have pre prepared um so amit ji uh nimesh bhai referred to this your you know the key element of success in maharashtra was working with the government at the state and district level so what learnings emerged from this about working with the government that were critical to scaling the program uh, so palav i think uh, you know we have i've seen a lot of ngo projects that work uh, very well at small scale uh, but i think if we really want to solve uh, you know social problems uh, at large scale and all pretty much all our pro problems unfortunately impact millions and in some cases hundreds of millions of people we really need to work with the government and do that do that work at at very very large scale we have to really step back and think about program design very very carefully and so that's what we did when we realized uh, that nimish bhai and his team at caring friends had something very special going in jalna uh, we thought about what elements of program design need to be incorporated we of course kept learning all along the way and improving on those program design elements and we are still doing that even today as we speak but i would say there have been uh, three or four critical uh, learnings along along the way it's been a 6 7 year journey so far those three or four learnings have been first of all that standard operating procedures uh and good processes are extremely important if you want to scale we have been very carefully trying to document uh all these operating procedures and share them uh with uh partners uh as we have been going along uh unless you share these procedures and as pe unless people understand them and replicate them uh people will keep reinventing their wheel and things will not be scalable so i think that's one very important learning the second is that uh, look you know uh, i uh, nimesh bhai and i have deep admiration for government uh, public servants when it comes down to the fact that if you just go and spend you know even a few hours with them you realize that they are often involved in 50 things or 100 things uh, we when we are trying to implement a program like this are focused on one thing with you know uh laser uh vision so it's very important for us to you know augment their capacity uh to execute that one thing and so what we did is uh you know and nimish bhai referred to this in his uh remarks uh we really augmented their capacity by making sure that uh, we uh, provided a pmu a project monitoring unit uh at the state level which basically did all the coordination uh, elevated the status of this program uh, you know took care of a lot of the burden that uh, the officials would otherwise have to deal with and i think that uh, ensured that scalability was achieved uh, secondly the same problem needs to be solved at the district administration level as well because district collectors are again doing lots of things and this program execution really happens in a 45 to 60 day period after harvest and before the monsoon comes you have a very short window for execution so there you need to augment the capacity of uh, ngo partners to be able to really execute it so again augmenting capacity in general whether at the state level or at the district level becomes a very critical requirement if this program has to succeed uh the third is a learning that i think we are still perfecting which is uh, success uh, of these programs particularly uh, sustainability really depends on ensuring uh, buy in at all level all levels i mean right from the ministerial levels to the senior bureaucrats the middle level bureaucrats and i think that's very very important uh, it takes time to do that 
uh, regimes change, bureaucrats change. Um, and when you have uh, discontinuity, the programs, then, you know, often you have resets. Um, and we are still learning how to basically do that very well. And we are trying our best to, uh, you know, and we're, of course, this year, we have the biggest disruption we had is COVID, where work couldn't happen. Uh, but I think we are learning how to make sure that uh, you embed, uh, you know, all uh, the buy-ins at different levels. And the fourth, and I think most important, uh, is community support. I think if the community is with you, you generate a lot of support for these kind of programs. So making sure that there's a very strong active buy-in from the community and there's bottoms up. This is not a contractor driven, uh, you know, program. Uh, as Nimish Bhai rightly pointed out, 75, 80% of the cost is actually borne by the community. It's unique in that uh, dimension of it. And making sure the community understands and therefore almost demands for it uh, you know, uh, despite the fact that they often don't have money, but they still realize that this will transform their lives is very, very important. So I would say those are the three or four critical learnings that we have had, but we are learning every day uh, because this is transformational work. We are only catalysts in this change process and we are trying to be good catalysts. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that, Ramitji. This is simply amazing. I mean, it's very interesting to see that, you know, you're not focusing on having the government provide funds, but rather an enabler of scale. You know, it's a, it's a shift, basically having the appropriate relationships and infrastructure to ensure a smooth execution is the, you know, you're viewing government as that partner. Yes, Pallav, I think we don't actually, we need the government for very, very little funding. If you look at the amount of funding the government has provided is, minuscule and in fact sometimes we even wonder whether we need that mm -hmm. what we really need the government uh, for is approvals and for their ground level support it's really between uh you know the wonderful ngos uh, who we try to really organize and the community uh and the silk belongs to the communities they are topsoil which has gone into the dams and they just uh, uh, you know the catalysts who are enabling that to come back to them yeah, it's it's very very amazing model. Thank you, thank you, Amitji. Uh, my third question is to Mala, uh, representing technology at scale. Uh, Mala, can you please share some key highlights of what the societal platform enables for participatory programs, such as this one, to operate successfully at scale? Thank you, Pallav, uh, and really happy to be here and share a few thoughts on some new ways in which we are looking at working with digital to solve for the issue of scale in water security. A little bit of context would be useful here. So through 13 years of funding NGOs in participatory water management, at Argium, we learned that problems in water security are far outpacing our collective ability to resolve. Uh, fast depleting groundwater, vanishing springs, and increasing contamination, especially chemical contamination like arsenic and fluoride, are compounding the problems towards provision of safe and sustainable water for all in different aspects of water security be it quantity, quality, or access. Agency of communities is fundamental to participatory water management, and capacity building is key to building that agency. This is particularly significant for water as it is not a static resource and requires runtime engagement from communities whose lives and livelihoods depend on it. And the current models of successful capacity building are far too resource intensive from both a cost and time perspective, so that replication at scale is unsustainable. After years of training many thousands of people, as a sector, we found that it is extremely challenging to find trained people when we need them. And even if we discover them with difficulty, we would not know with confidence as to how much they are already trained on and what is the gap that needs to be filled. So finite resources keep going into repetitive training that should ideally be freed up to instead pay for the services that the trained people can deliver, creating much needed pathways for sustainable jobs and livelihoods. In addition, we found that there is too much friction to find the right data, the right experts, and the right contextual solutions so that every next effort is like starting from scratch and there is little leverage of work that has already happened. As a result, programs take very long to get off the ground. 
So we figured that for scale to happen effectively, we need to reduce thresholds of participation so that more people can become part of the solution faster. And as we do that, we have to improve the liquidity of knowledge, of data, of actors, so that they are easily accessible and can be trusted, improve transparency and accountability, as well as find easier ways for convergence to happen. So our efforts over the last couple of years, working closely with partners from Samaj, Sarkar and Bazaar in designing and deploying an open public digital infrastructure to resolve some of these problems using core societal platform principles, which are really premised upon distributing the ability to solve, is starting to show some pathways for how this can happen using simple digital tools that require a small change or what we are calling a plus one change in behavior, we find that trainers and trainees can interact much more frequently using a fraction of resources per unit of transaction and benefit from better access to trusted knowledge and data that is generated as an exhaust from these interactions. Although still evolving, through this, we are able to light up trained people, know who they are, where they are, what they know, as well as what they are engaging with in terms of content and potentially also data and artifacts. This has increased observability for programs and participants in real time and is also helping the ecosystem by leaving behind what we are calling digital nutrients that the next or the adjacent program can leverage. Our hope is that this will allow for solutions to become faster, better, and cheaper, and scale to happen with speed and sustainability. As expected, we are finding that while technology is a necessary condition for scale, it is not sufficient. Building agency of communities requires engagement with many adjacencies, ranging from appropriate incentive structures, institutional capacities, program management capabilities, livelihood pathways, issues of gender and equity, to name some. Our current focus is therefore to look for nimbler ways in which we can aggregate these collective experiences and offer them back to the ecosystem so that this can catalyze many more actors to engage as contributors and consumers on the platform, even as they continue to do what they do best. Uh, we are excited by the possibilities of how this design can support the cluster-based water program that IIT IIT is planning. A multi-stakeholder program like this is likely to need support for frequent and curated interactions, initially between the three NGO partners and very soon with the communities, government, and other emergent partners. This will be key to arriving at and following through on a shared vision of success in the cluster. It will also be important to generate digital assets from these interactions as they happen so that people, content, templates, and data are available and can be accessed to generate facts that all stakeholders can process to recalibrate their own actions as appropriate. These assets can also help in replication beyond the cluster as methods, solutions, and impact become more visible. We see the potential for the platform in enabling these well-crafted interactions generating and curating the digital assets and enabling access to them. And we do look forward to exploring this together. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Maharaji. You know, how you're leveraging technology, it's, it's great to hear that. You know, obviously the problem is really massive considering the dire situation we have to water in India. And, you know, it's, it's good to not just address the problem in ad hoc way, but leverage technology to the maximum extent to, you know, use it to proactively scale the solution. So it's very, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to hear the work you're doing in this area. Thank uh, you. My final question is to Ravi Ji, who's representing Rotary's Kotinati mission uh, that uh, Joe mentioned earlier in his, in his presentation, uh, to plant one crore samplings per revenue district. Um, so, Raviji, what aspect would you like to highlight about this mission in the context of eradicating water poverty? I think we are, uh, uh, I think, very essential part of the, the whole circle. Without our participation, whatever eco restoration, what uh, uh, what one one crore uh, tree plantation, I think it will not be a three sixty degrees uh, complete project. See, uh, Rotary, I think the greatest achievement Rotary has done is eradication of uh, polio. It has uh, succeed, successfully eradicated 99% uh, of uh, polio cases in, in the world. Now the, the second greatest uh, target the Rotary will be is planning is 
to eradicate polio of the planet. We consider uh, uh, climate change and global warming, all this catastrophe as a polio of the planet. Uh, to, uh, to get ready for this kind of a big challenge, Rotary has already taken steps to introduce environment as seventh focal area. As a prelude to this, our Rotary District 3190, where I come from, we started a, a program called Rotary Kotinati. Uh, in Sanskrit, Koti is one crore, that is 10 million. Nati is planting. I think that's exactly how we started. We started this with uh, uh, with uh, uh, the mission statement was to increase uh, the uh, the uh, the forest cover, green cover, uh, in India to 33 percent, what is today as 21.89 percent. So that's exactly the reason we we are want to take this into war footing. So we started this uh, as a uh, trial a project. We did uh, uh, we did take a one crop plantation uh, and, and in each in every revenue district that is india has got about 739 revenue districts so we wanted to in every revenue district we wanted to plant one crop uh, saplings and 10 crore seed bombing to achieve this target so as a pilot project we took this uh, this project in uh, kolar and chikbalapur uh, draw, both are drought ridden uh, uh, districts, uh, both are in Karnataka. We started by, uh, uh, by the, it, it is a very, very scientifically uh, designed project. And we, to execute this, we, we, uh, uh, we, we, we invited, we invited a very senior IS officer. So where uh, he was uh, passionately uh, driven and uh, committed uh, uh, committed uh, uh, to environment and uh, the climate change and global warming uh, mr k amar narayana we are thankful to him for guiding us he took the reins and guided us and the 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 planning is to is is in twofold one is uh, uh, bottom to top and the other one is top to bottom the funding is from Narega, Narega, MG Narega through the government is the funding tool for us. The way we uh, top to bottom was when we entered this uh, field of uh, one crore tree plantation, we got into MOU with the, uh, the, the government, senior government officials, that is uh, uh, the government of Karnataka. And in through this, uh, the MOUs with the uh, CEOs of Zilla Panchayat the, and uh, the district uh, uh, deputy commissioners. Through them, we entered the other areas where we wanted their support. That is through this, uh, uh, the CEOs and district commissioners, we uh, we 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 asked them to get into MOU with the forest department. That is forest department included the territorial forest and other one is social forestry and agriculture department, then sericulture department, irrigation department, watershed department, and horticultural department, then again education, education institution, education department. These are the places we wanted to uh, to take it, take this uh Cotinati possibly forward. Then what we did was we uh, we through the uh, uh, CEO we we had interaction and addressing of the situation uh, addressing of the program at every uh, every every district level district level that is two districts two district level taluka level and hobli level again at gram panchayat level we had uh, interactions to explain to the officials and the public uh, at large the concept of Rotary Cotinati, the purpose of Rotary Cotinati, and the way forward. This is how we brought the knowledge to the entire uh, entire uh, uh, the community. Then at this time, we invited second round was to enter the uh, uh, lowest strata of uh, our communication is to village panchayat with farmers 
and village panchayat chairmen and the the, the grassroots uh, uh, agriculture uh, uh, you know uh, uh, range forest officers agriculture officials here we had one to one uh, uh, interaction with the farmers and we explained the the model what the th- economically sustainable model of tree plantation that is tree plantation uh, uh, tree planting as a, a future future of economy that is tree farms both as plantation uh, uh, tree planting other one is fruit bearing tree plantation and we explain the economic suffit the process the way forward and we 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 gave them the list of trees which are suitable for the local farm, uh, local soil and the, depending upon the water availability we gave them the choice the farmers uh, the choice and the gram panchayat people for social forestry for the public uh, plantation the farmers were to plant this in their private uh, private lands and other uh, other uh, panchayats and others for the social uh, that is uh, public uh, plantation like avenue trees and uh, parks and in the uh, hospitals and schools and uh, all other places and even a uh, uh, bund uh, lake uh, lake bunds so we we gave this the uh, circular with the uh, the the recommended uh, uh, species we gave it to the farmers we asked them to choose the number and the species what they prefer we collected them the filled up forms we gave it to the, from the panchayat from panchayat we took it to ceos designated officer who is who is who is who is designated to interact with rotary kotinati uh, project and with through him uh, we sent the uh, all the requ- uh, requirements and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, the the uh, required numbers and species to the respective uh, department either agriculture department or the horticulture department all that with that they were supposed to raise the number of uh, pro- the the plants which were the purpose supposed to uh, give this and they are supposed to supp- they are to give us uh this uh, number of plants raised healthy and uh, good plants only by the beginning of the next monsoon this is one mm-hmm. cycle with this mm-hmm. with this we we uh, we started planting and uh, our target was 1 crore but we reached 38 lakhs with our project is for 3 years 3 to 3 to 5 years because first year we plant second year again there will be uh, there will be mortality gap filling will be there again third third year also between 36 36 months 24 months to 36 months we take care of them the health and the health and the survival rate of the uh, plants are uh, are uh, are managed through geo tagging and are we at this, the whole process is managed at one particular time that is appointing of district level officers that is appointing retired uh, dc dcf district uh, conservative of forests and uh, at taluka level uh, uh, government officials who, re- who are all they are all retired and local yeah. people yeah so that they have time they have passion but we also give them a minimum uh, uh, kind of salary and okay. with this and rotary inspecting supervising the plantation during monsoon where the plantation happens there is a time you need an a big workforce which was which was to happen right to right, right. Uh, yeah. ravi shankar ji uh, we are yeah. just about out of time now sorry it's it's All really right. amazing to hear your story <laughs> um, and it and it's also great to hear you know how the water body education work become sustainable actually because of the tree plantation that yeah. rotary follows up with yeah. um uh, so dolly i just want to check do we have time for audience question i know we are just at the top of the hour we have a question over here uh for uh, ravi shankar ji especially since he, he's already here so yeah. where can i get more details on kotinati from rotary any website link will be helpful very inspiring to know the tree plantation and seed balling method excellent work is it a so, question so the question is where can i get more in details on kotinati by rotary so i think i will will answer that later and okay. you have, they have a, a person where we can communicate we would rather do that sure yeah 
that's the only question. Most of the questions have been answered by the team members of each of those uh, groups uh, on YouTube itself or the social media. So I think that was the only open question at this moment. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dolly. This was yeah, such a fascinating Karen, conversation. You know, I wish we had uh, more time to continue this. Pala, can I have two minutes? Because uh, I, a very vital part is missing of my talk. Okay, yes. Yeah, this is about IEC activities. How did we reach to the grassroots farmers? How did we do that? We went into IEC activities, information, education, and communication by uh, pr printing pamphlets and uh, even the government agencies going to every village at village shandies and village bus stops and village uh, and markets and with that uh, you know uh, we call it as a uh, dole dole uh, that is uh, we uh, uh, we uh, awake all this uh, farmers going to their places printing pamphlets in local languages and local uh, communication system and uh, uh, and uh, and printing t-shirts caps for the local uh, uh, grassroots workers this is the way we could communicate with this with that they came to give us their uh, requirements this was very very important uh, aspect yeah thank you so much thank you so much raviji uh, and thank you joe and karthik for sharing the cluster model and the role of partnerships and thanks to all our panelists for sharing their experience and insights on how to make this transformation both scalable and sustainable uh, I have one more question for everyone, uh, Palav. Just one last question. Uh, it says how IIT and their ecosystem involved in promoting net, net, net is are they involved in promoting natural farming among their stakeholders and farmers? How dams are maintained post construction, built, and how do you make sure it is not silted again? I will let Joe come in to answer that. Thanks. Uh... Thanks, uh, Sridhar. So I think the way that we're looking to build the cluster models is with several partners. And uh, there are partners that also work directly. Uh, even AT Chandra Foundation does work. Deepti does work with farmers and natural farming. And so the goal, as we talked about, is to extend it to other partners who bring in that expertise. Uh, the core to the sustainability is your grassroots NGO partners who are working with the panchayats. Many of these villages have what they call tank user groups, and these have to be enabled. They ensure that the long-term sustainability is in place. Uh, and uh, again, perfecting that is going to be required, but that's the intent in these clusters is to prove that model where the community can really take over and uh, manage the program themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, uh, for sharing that. Uh, Dolly, do you have any other closing comments? Uh, I think the rest of the questions will be answered by the individual group members over there. We are getting a lot of questions, but thank you so much for the entire panel. Um, I'm really thankful to all of you. Thank you, Amji, Nimesh Bhai, Ravi Shankarji, Mala, Palav, and Joe for joining us today. To our viewers, we hope this session has been as insightful for you as us. There's going to be a lot of opportunities for collaboration and we all coming together. OVPI Water Team would continue to bring you conversations with experts, entrepreneurs, partners, and execution leaders like we had today. Uh, many experts believe we have less than a decade to address this challenge in India, so we need all the help we can get. We would love for each one of you to participate in whatever way you can. Pass this on information and educate others. Volunteer with us. Donate in whatever capacity you can so we can continue this work. Collection of drops create an ocean. Any contribution from you will help us eliminate water poverty in India. Please visit us at eliminatingwaterpoverty.org um, to find out more. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank you very much.